Hi, it's Cedric here. We have an interesting case for you to today. Let me introduce you to Jubilee, who is obviously a boxer, and she's a girl, and she's about seven years of age. So she came in to see me on Saturday, and she came in because she had a lump. So let me show you the lump. And this is uh, the lump here. Uh, we've talked previously about mast cell cancers, mast if you remember, we had a case, uh, and he was called Cooper, Cooper Boxall. He was a, again a boxer that had a, a mast cell tumor on his on his cheek, if you remember. So when I saw Jubilee and diagnosed the mast cell on Saturday, because it's so big, we booked her in immediately to have surgery, and that's today, Monday. We've talked before about running preoperative blood tests. Um, to make sure that everything's hunky dory. This being a very prolonged surgery to remove a mass this big, uh, we obviously ran um, preoperative blood tests on, on this girl. And let me show you the results. So we ran these through, you know, we get these results about seven or eight minutes um, uh, after we put them in the machines. So the first thing that came up is her red cell count is down. It's not critically low, but it's quite low, something we have to be aware of. Uh, and then if we go to this, these here, here we have some real issues. So her blood sugar is normal, but her creatinine and her urea are up quite a lot. If you can see, 468, normal is 44 to 159, and 35, normal is 2.5 to 9.6. So they're the kidney functions. Another kidney function is the phosphorus, 3.83. Uh, normal is 0 0.8 to 2.2. So these, there's more to come, but uh, sorry, there's more that I want to share with you, but but this is really nasty. If we're to put Jubilee under anaesthetic, um, in spite of being on a drip and everything else like that, it is very possible we'd have pushed these kidneys over the brink into failure. So the And she would have been on painkillers after surgery, anti-inflammatories, and they cause kidney or can cause kidney damage in their own right. And so we don't want to use them in a dog which has kidney issues. So this is a really, really important finding on these preoperative blood tests. And as I said, there's more to come. The amylase and lipase are quite high. The lipase is 1,970, uh, normal is 200 to 1,800, and the amylase is 2,429. Normal is 500 to 1,500. So they show pancreatitis. So this girl has two issues, um, kidney and and pancreatitis. The question becomes, are they both real diseases or is the pancreatitis causing the kidney issues or are the kidney issues causing the pancreatitis? So that's what we will be working out now. But it's a really, really, really good thing that we didn't operate. We're now going to... Uh, uh, not operate today. We're going to put her on treatment for both the kidney issues and the pancreatitis. We'll reassess her in another um, 10 or 14 days and ensure that these things have come down. Uh, if they have, then we will uh, go to surgery. So I just thought this is a really interesting uh, case to talk through with you about the importance of preoperative blood tests. The, the, the critical thing I guess that I'm getting across here is that she had no signs of kidney disease, uh, according to the owner, or on my physical exam when I examined her the other day, and she had tiny signs of pancreatitis. In other words, she's missed the odd meal here or there. But again, the owner said that she regularly misses meals. So looking backwards, you can say, yeah, maybe that's a pancreatitis thing, uh, but in many dogs, missing the odd, odd meal is, is occasional meal is totally uh, within normal. So really interesting finding and really pushes the point with respect to why we need to run uh, blood profiles before any pet goes under anaesthetic to pick up things like this. See you in the next video.